What's up guys and welcome to this new video where we talk about Google search ads. Now search ads are the absolute classic among those Google ads and they have been around I think since 1997 or 98 or something like that when Google started and um, they are extremely powerful to this day. So search ads I can show you very quickly um, are those little text ads that you see when you actually enter something on Google. And I use this tool here called iSearchFrom because I'm located in Germany and when I want to see like uh, United States ads, then I have to use this tool which emulates me being from the United States. And let's say I enter something like, oh yeah, iPhone is actually something that I <laughs> use several times as an example, but let's go with the iPhone X for example, right? iPhone 10, however you might want to call that. And when you enter this, you see here that we get a bunch of search results and the top results are always or often um, ads. So when we go through that list here, we see visible.com is placing an ad right in our face. Then we have ad.com, att.com. We have, uh, oh, that's actually an organic search result, but in the bottom we should have some more ads. Um, uh, okay, in this case, we, we only have those two ads at the very top, but the point is, there are ads at the top of the search engine results page and normally also at the very bottom of the search engine, uh, search engine results page. And as you see, these ads are completely made out of text, okay? So all text, no images, that's something that you will see in Google Shopping ads that we will discuss in the next video. But these ads are still extremely, extremely powerful. So compared to Facebook ads, for example, they seem super boring. Just a few paragraphs of text, some like keywords, and that's it. So why are these ads really so powerful and why should you consider using them for your business if they are a good fit for your niche or your products? Well, if I type in iPhone X and you show me an ad where you tell me iPhone X or iPhone 10 as low as 768, um, then of course it is something that I'm generally interested in. So if I'm looking to buy um, an iPhone X, iPhone 10, then this is an ad that I might potentially click on. Purchase a new iPhone 10 and get started with Visible Today, new phone, new you, $40 a month, all in phone service, blah, 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 blah. So you have those headlines that you use to capture people's attention and then you have a description to explain what your website is about. So there is your time to shine. There is where you can tell people buy it because buy from us because of that, buy it because of our great service, of our financing, whatever the hell, right? And then people can actually check you out. People can go ahead and can see whether this is something for them. This is so effective because you trigger those ads by using keywords. So these guys here, for example, have some sort of keyword setting that triggers their ad to people that typed in iPhone 10 into the search bar, okay? So super powerful and that's what I want to show you in this video. So I want to show how to set up a search ad on Google and I want to do that in some sort of basic way because I also have a full scale Google Ads training. I have a full scale Google Ads one on one coaching and of course I cannot cover the whole complexity of it in this short mini free mini course here but I'm still trying to give you as much value as possible so that you can take this info put it into your own campaigns or your own account and start your Google search campaign from scratch. The goal is that you leave this whole course being able to start your campaigns, okay? So with this being said, create a campaign without a guidance as I told you in the last video already. Then we type, we click on search. Okay, and then we can uh, click on website visits, okay? We don't really need that here, just hit continue. And we can call this campaign, for example, let's say you are selling, as I told you before, gold necklaces, right? Um, now, here's the first point. You can structure your campaigns in different ways. So this is a search campaign. And as I told you, we have campaigns, then we have ad groups, and then we have ads and keywords. One way to group campaigns is by having the, com be, uh, the campaign being the, the umbrella for all your products. Let's say you put all your necklaces in one campaign, or maybe you put all your accessories in one campaign if you have a lot of very big um, collections. Maybe you go way more narrow and you put like one specific product in one campaign because you want to test it in several ways. It really depends on your store. If you have, for example, a one product store, of course you have one campaign for maybe just one type of that product. Um, if you have a thousand products, maybe you use individual campaigns to group together products that make sense, um, you know, grouping together. In this case, let's call this campaign just necklaces, okay? I just want to demonstrate how this works. 
these boxes are not too important when you when you begin but you should always ex or most of the time you should exclude them i don't want to cover too many in-depth things right here for now just exclude them it doesn't really matter uh, or it, it it's better that way <laughs> Then we have some more settings. Again, you don't need to touch them. You can enter another location, which for most of you guys is probably the United States. You can actually get super um, narrow here. So you can literally uh, target individual postal codes or, or um, like cities, etc. But most of the time you probably just want to target the United States or, or something like that. We don't define an audience here. So when you have a display campaign where you want to show display ads, visual ads to certain people, you can also define an audience similar to Facebook. Here, we want to target people by keywords. So what they are typing into Google um, rather than just like defining uh, who we show our ads to by how these people look like. OK, and that's also one of the big benefits. Then we have the daily budget and this Let's do $15. It's a daily budget that I like to use a lot when like trying new things or when people come to me that have a low budget. 15 is like my minimum to have a good, um, yeah, some sort of good mix between getting data somewhat quickly and still being able to control your budget effectively. Delivery match method standard for now doesn't matter at this point. Then we have the bidding strategy and this can be a whole like topic by itself. But for now, to keep it to the point, um, I recommend that most of the time you simply use manual CPC. You can also untick the box at enhanced CPC. That's something that makes a lot of sense when you have some conversion data. Sometimes you can also tick it right away. In general, most of the time uh, when you have absolutely no conversion data in your account, no conversion um, history, use manual CPC or maximize clicks. But to be honest, manual CPC is a great way to start. Again, some more settings, you can leave them. And here is the first interest, really interesting thing. So there is something called ad extensions. And when you create, so in the next step, of course, we are creating ads, just as you know, as you've seen here, but there are also so-called ad extensions and they will add additional information or snippets or something like that to your ad. For example, this join for $40 a month, coverage for you, refer a friend. These are extensions, right? Um, another extension is, for example, this um, this rating here. That's actually not that easy to get. And there are more extensions that uh, give people additional information. So they can be extremely useful to make your or to like ramp up your click through rate, because obviously the bigger your ad and the more information you place there, the more likely people are to see it and also to click it. And also the more framed they are, if you give them a lot of info about their business and they still decide to click means they are more targeted and more relevant for your business. So for now, let's just add, for example, a, um, a call out extension. And there are some already. And we just want to create a new callout. Callouts are some little texts that show up um, below the ad that give additional information, like quick additional information. A typical callout, for example, would be free shipping. Okay. Another typical callout would be, um, for example, 30% off site wide. Another one might be, for example, um, two day delivery. Right. So these are all things that appear right below your in, your actual ad. And the, the whole purpose of these callouts is that you can use certain um, like key features or key benefits of your business that you want to repeat over and over again. And you can place them below your ad so that you can use the full ad copy to talk about your product and use those callouts to talk more about specifics of the product or specifics of your, your business. OK, so that makes a lot of sense to use. Very powerful. Um, generally, as a rule of thumb, I recommend that you use uh, as many extensions as possible. So we don't go through all of them. Some of them are actually quite self-explanatory. For example, site links allow you to um, place links below the original ad, which makes it much bigger, which gives people like the opportunity to click to a specific um, to a specific piece of your site or a specific link inside your inside your whole website. Um, but they are very self-explanatory. You simply click here and then you define the, the link and the text, etc. You can do things like the about us page, etc, etc. So as a rule of thumb, as I said, add as many extensions to the site as po uh, to this ad as possible, because with every extension, the amount of information that the customer has grows and also the amount of um, or the, the click through rate will increase most likely because the ad will get bigger. 
So that's it for now, um, campaign settings. Now we get to the ad group and I want to really go through this somewhat fast now because the ad groups are now where we like define the, it, it's almost like the, the core of the account uh, of the campaign. Okay. So we defined the campaign as necklaces. So we want to place necklaces in there. Now the ad group is a great way to go one step deeper and say, for example, golden necklaces, right? Why do we group that at the, at the ad group level? Because the ad group is where the keywords are stored. So on the ad group, um, the keywords are stored, which means that inside an ad group, there is, or there should be one coherent topic. If you want to advertise silver necklaces, gold necklaces, and rings inside an ad group, you have a problem because this ad group shares the same ads. And if you want to be relevant for people looking for a ring and a necklace, for example, that's not really doable. So there should be, in this case, an ad group called gold necklaces, another one called silver necklaces, and then you can create another one called rings okay so that's a great way to set up ad groups keep them um like concise and inside each ad group there should only be one type of products that you advertise it can be a single product it can be a range of product but don't mix them up because this will massively hurt your relevance so let's delete those two for the moment and only go with gold necklaces then we define a bit a bit is how much you want to spend on one single click okay and of course, there are many ways to come up with a bit, um, scientific ways, less scientific ways. For now, let's just simply keep it keep it easy and say we bid $1 for a click. That's a fairly good bid for that niche. I assume that golden, I, I've advertised golden necklaces before, pretty much everything you can imagine, but I'm sure that a $1 bid is an okay um, bid to start with. You might still spend way less than that, but um, you might notice that for some niches, bids are actually relatively high. And now we are at the actual heart of this campaign, and these are the keywords. Now, keywords are like um, telling Google when to show your ad, okay? So when we enter the word necklace, Google will, will show us to everyone who's entering necklace or some variation of that word or something like that, okay? So super, super broad. You could get, probably you could spend $1,000 a day just by entering this word necklace here in that in that form, okay? Because Google will not only um, show ads to people that look for necklace, but also probably things like bracelet, etc. Because if you type in a keyword that way, it's called broad match, then Google will trigger all kind of search queries. There are also other type of match types that allow you to be more specific. Don't want to mention them here. They are extremely important, but we're already like filming 12 minutes and we are not even uh, at the ad part. So that's something for later. Uh, for you to discover. Um, but at this point here, you enter your keywords and I would do something like this here, golden necklace. Okay. Now that's a different match type. One that I use a lot. It's called broad match modifier and requires both of these words to come up in the search query. So now it is way, way, way more specific because people have to enter the word golden and the word necklace or actually gold, probably gold is more specific, right? Gold is better. I think. Yeah. Go <laughs> Gold, yeah, I'm not a native speaker, but I think gold is also right. Um, well, not sure. Gold necklaces, and now people have to type in both of these words. Of course, you can add more here. You can add um, gold, uh, you can add uh, um, synonyms of that, gold necklaces, you can add gold necklace. You may want to add also other type of keywords that are very similar. The point is, keep it all concise inside a single ad group, okay? So... Yes, there are way more options. There's also the option to do dynamic. We just keep it at this for now. We hit save and continue and now we create the ads. So now we create the only part of the whole thing that people can actually see. So the keywords are in the background, the bidding strategies, everything is of course in the background. Here we type in your final URL, for example, your fancy jewelry store.com. And now we have the headlines that you just saw here in this on this screen, okay? And a typical headline for a product like this might be, um, buy amazing jewelry 50% off okay amazing yeah amazing jewelry 50% off um big uh you know some not really accurate but big summer sale um or, or something like that actually you should aim to take a lot of space here so you have 30 characters it makes sense to use it so that you can bring across a, 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 a like longer message but buy amazing jewelry at 50 percent off um at 50 percent off 
big summer clearance sale uh gold actually you, you should do this more ac um, more accurate so not amazing jewelry but buy gold necklaces right that's what we're talking about so here is the thing if you would have mixed rings and necklaces and everything <clears throat> there's no way to really make it relevant for everything and you would have to say jewelry but that's less relevant than gold necklaces if you're looking for it right and here we can then talk about like um you know i don't know uh free shipping to the us yes you can also do it in the um, callouts as i just told you but sometimes it makes sense to still put it somewhere prominent because those callouts will not always show up here is the display path that you also know from from um, facebook ads so that people think um or, or that you can show people what they uh what they will can expect on this page we could do something like necklace gold okay so that's not where they actually get to that's the final url but here they see oh necklace gold it must be relevant for my search query and now we can just describe the product a little, or what they can expect a little bit more looking for beautiful golden necklaces um at uh your fancy jewelry we have 14k gold necklaces for any size or something like that you can also go with something like durable gold <laughs> i'm just making this up right now uh um unisex or something you can you know some people make write those ad or those ad tags in actual in actual text form some people use like those important um like key elements durable gold unisex um fast delivery uh um best materials or something like that of course it depends on your niche of course you know better what you're selling than i do if you give me a very specific product with the landing page i can write you a really really powerful and good ad i'm just making all of that stuff up now for some random product that doesn't exist the point is adapt it to your products to your store to your niche and make sure that you are talking directly to the person because you know what this person typed into google because of the keywords right so after that you can just hit done and that's pretty much it so you have um, created a campaign or you have defined the campaign settings how much you want to spend the bidding strategy etc you defined the keywords that you want to rank for and you defined the ad that someone sees when they type this word into google okay and all these things together lead to this thing here an ad that a customer sees with more information about your business, your product. And if now someone goes ahead, types in gold necklace into Google, they see your ad, they click through, they get to your website. In this case, I would link them to a collection of ne gold necklaces, for example. Now they have exactly what they've been looking for. And now it's, of course, um, your store's task to convert them by showing them good product, good prices, a good selection, etc., etc. Now Google Ads job is done and your store has to convert. But Google Ads has done a really, really amazing job by giving you the right people. Okay, so that's the important thing. Google will give you the right people, then your store can convert, uh, convert them. So I hope that this video was helpful for you if you're starting out with Google Ads. Um, search ads are an enormous topic. There are so many more things that we didn't cover here, but this is enough for you to set up a somewhat solid um, ad. Of course, when you're trying to, to like seriously work with Google and you want to scale and you want to really get super profitable, then you have to like learn more and apply more tactics, negative keywords, multiple bidding strategies, optimization efforts, device by base bidding, etc., etc. But this will be fine for you to get started. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it was helpful. I'm looking forward to seeing.